Hey guys, this is Coach Triggerfish um, coming to you with a little bit of a VOD review, support VOD review. Um, we'll be taking a look at Fuzzy Wuzzy and um, seeing how we played against Nerf May on Sunday. Uh, a couple of the main topics that we're going to be going over um, with me, it's always going to be how we use natural cover. Um, the proper and improper times to res. Um, when should we be valking? And, um, and then towards the end, a little bit of uh, hero swapping. So the main things that we're going to be going over for today, uh, let's get into it. So off the bat, we're on attack, and oh, and sorry, I have to clarify, the replays got wiped today, unfortunately. Um, so I couldn't do it actually within the client, so I'm using the stream from uh, from Sunday on Twitch. I did look at it last night, so I got a, um, a POV of Fuzzy Wuzzy throughout this whole thing. Um, unfortunately, I just didn't record it. So, um, right off the bat, we're pocketing uh, Shogun, which is great. You know, that's someone that you want to be um, hero damaging, your damage boosting is your Widowmaker, or anyone at range is going to get, um, whether it's spam damage or, you know, you're looking for those picks. Because right off the bat, you got those two picks, and now they're on the back foot. And during this time, you're not really on screen, but you're doing a very good job of using natural cover. Um, you're using the payload as natural cover, you're switching between, you know, corner to pillar, and you're never actually within um, any real major threat line of sight. So that your positioning on attack so far has been, has been really good. Um, So, first, kind of, uh, first coaching tip is we always want to be looking at the kill feed, right? So, everything's going good so far. You guys have the advantage. It's looking good, looking good. But then all of a sudden, this happens. Um, you lose a tank, right? And the picks that you guys got at the beginning, everyone has now respawned. So it was a six on six, and now all of a sudden, it's a uh, four v or it's a five v six for you guys. So that's the first thing. It's not, you know, the worst thing in the world, but um, it definitely puts you guys on the back foot. And then this happens. So now it's a trade. So you were down to 4v6 and then you went up to 4v5. So you're still behind. Um, but it's not it's not crazy. So this is this is a moment where you choose to res somebody. Um, and Unfortunately, it leaves your main tank very vulnerable during that time. It's it's a risky res, but it's probably one that we should have avoided. Um, and that's that's something that we need to take into account. Is we're always looking at the kill feed, and if it was. You know, if the first pick was a DPS, it's a lot less impactful to the team as if it were a tank to go down. So you guys lost an off tank, um, which really puts you further behind in the fight. Um, losing a main tank or your other main healer is kind of the worst uh, picks that can happen to your team. Um, 
So you guys lost a tank, and then you guys traded out. It it was a risky res to pull, but um, yeah, it just didn't work out. Okay, so you guys re re engage. You're doing well to stay inside of natural cover. And then, okay. So, let's add a little bit of audio in here. And it looks like Pocketbook's gonna pick up the thing we saw it earlier. As soon as Doomsday picked out where that widow was, he just shoves his shield right in her face. Okay, we got a few ults coming here, and it looks like Pocketbook's gonna pick up Lav. And Night by Day with the Zenyatta ult uh, will really save the rest. So, remember what I said about who the two biggest picks are on the team so first pick that went was your main healer and that's really rough that means that you are now the only source of healing for the team um, and with mercy it's either a situation where you need to pop Valk immediately so you can keep up with the healing or um, get the res off immediately if it's safe, or it's a lost fight. Rest of this fight as Adium takes out. So okay, we got a few alts coming here. And team. Let's, let's take a look at what got invested into this fight. As as out where that was, he just so you right guys invest place. coalescence. It gets shattered. Okay, we got a few alts coming and then here, and it looks picked. like pocket books. You guys invest blast. shatter and, and they invest strength. With the Zen Tranquility is an incredibly strong support alt and it'll win you fights almost single-handedly um so now you guys are down two and this all happened really fast but it's important that we keep looking up at this kill box i do it all the time as a main tank um i need to know who gets picked because it means different things right uh let's say um we take down their uh, main heals. It means that they're very weak on healing. They're very, suscept they're very susceptible to damage right now. So an elongated fight where we uh, break down their barriers, do more damage, they can't keep up with the healing, we will win that fight eventually. Um, let's say that they lost a main tank. Their... Uh, they have very little damage mitigation. So any damage that goes through, if we play fast, we can steamroll them. Right? So that's what it means to me as a main tank, but what it means to you as a healer um, is very similar. So we lost main heals and we lost a damage. Yada ult, so uh, will really save the rest of this fight. I feel like that was a bit of a, a well panic ult. And, uh, um, where you were, strong defense from Nerf May. you all of a sudden all went from way, good, good positioning right in inside face. of natural cover inside of your team. Okay, we got a few alts coming here. Uh, the and fight got a little like scrappy. Pick up you went over and here, by day with the which is all good. Alt, uh, but then really save the rest of this you, you kind of got caught out by the main, and then popped your alt to get out. As well um, as blank, and uh, there we have it, guys. It if like if your team's already dead, just dying with them and saving that alt will be. Doomsday. more useful yeah, uh, than using good, your ult uh, to get out alive because your team has to reset anyways yeah. here's that hammer down coming in immediate yeah. trans so we're back up here doing all right that was good you went to damage boost your alting reaper that's a ton of damage this is all good So now we take a look at this. This is a very, this was a very ill-advised res that you get. It, it works, but I don't want you 
to come away with thinking that this is something that you should replicate in the future. Um, I mean, I'm, I do it all the time. I do a lot of really wacky things and it sometimes pays off, but other times it throws the game. And, um, ADM was, is kind of having a, an off or an unfortunate game. There's a lot of things that he does that, um, kind of helps you guys. So let's take a look at it. So Reaper, so Blizzard gets infested. You guys lose a main tank immediately. They lose a the damage. Your Reaper goes in, frozen, killed, right? So you guys are now down. Um, It's, if, if we slow it down, um, you'll see that Reaper gets it. You start rezzing immediately, but the Reinhardt actually went to charge you and to stop this res from happening, but the ice block stopped his own Reinhardt from coming through. So you actually get the res off and then he walls off and actually gives you guys a little bit of cover. So it was super unfortunate play from Adium, like really unfortunate, because had he not done what he did, you get pinned, and then all of a sudden you went from an even fight to a lost fight, because now you're down as well. So it was really unfortunate play by the other team that made that res possible. This this was just a good fire strike. Um, you, you were you were right. So basically, what happened is you guys had just won a team fight. Uh, your team chose to come up and push the advantage, and you came with them. This is all things that are good. Um, but then a fire strike comes in and gets you through the wall. That's just unlucky. So as this fight plays out. So it's 5v5 right now. But remember, defenders have the spawn advantage at this point. Zolt's getting invested. Everything's good. You guys trade out. So that's main healer for main healer at this point. Right? Because you're almost on your way back. And ADM's going to be back any second. So at this point, it's uh, there's there's two things that can happen. Either you go for the res, or you pop your Valk. This would be a good time to pop Valk as well, because both teams right now are missing their healers. They're both low on healing, and they're not. Neither are trying to push for an advantage. So if you come in here, so Trank gets popped, that's a big burst healing, Moira gets picked. Now all of a sudden, everyone's very low, right? You don't have it quite yet, but then boom, you get it. People are still low. This is a good time to pop it because now all of a sudden you give healing to your entire team which then means that they can push this advantage because they're down a tank and a uh, and a main healer and then with that once once you top up the rest of your team because look at this so while you're going for this res like your team's still kind of taking damage and they get very they get dangerously low 
before you guys are able to go in again. And that, that kind of forces your nano out. Right? Nano is a bit more of a valuable um, alt than Valk is. Valk's kind of on the same level as Coalescence, where you know it builds fast and you can just kind of use it. Like it's not like it's it's not on the same level as Tranquility or Lucio's Beat. You know those are huge, impactful support alts that will swing a fight, right? Um, Mercy Valk. My recollescence, these are kind of things that are good to have in a fight and, and can give you an advantage. Um, so I would put Nano in that, you know, in, in one of the bigger ones. So investing Valk instead of Nano beforehand to get everyone topped up and then go for the res would probably be the better play, right? Making sure that your team is healthy and safe, they can start pushing the advantage. You quickly get the res off and now your your whole team's ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is this is also a second um, secondary thing where in your Valk, and we'll see it we'll see another example is you get very fixated on one thing, where um, you're you're very focused on this Rhine, and you're you're solely looking at him. Um, and you, you tend to get pretty close when Valk has a, a really far range. Um, in in Valk. It's it's a really good scouting tool, which you can use. Um, you can kind of fly super far ahead. Let's uh, let's re swap here. So with Valk, your beam is still this far. You don't have to be super close, right? It's it's still got a fair distance. But with Valk, oh no, what's going on? What? With Valk, I can be all the way up here and I can see everything, right? And I can say like, hey, there's a McCree flanking over there and whatnot. This Epic Pen is really screwing up my, my system. Yeah, anyways, Valk has a really long range. This thing's got to go. Yeah. With no major shields right now, it's going to be tough to uh, defend this. Oh. Ooh, a nice pick from. Uh, so ideally, you would want to be. Really um, help this push here. With no major shields right now. It's yeah. Gonna be I tough mean, your damage boosting uh, your your Reaper. That's fine. Switch to someone who just died. <laughs> okay, we're sitting here with Blank. With uh, he's got that hammer down. He's just waiting to use it. But with these double shields, it's gonna be really difficult to really pull it off here. They're coming in with all of their alts, actually. Oh, all yeah. of the Baku's gonna be coming up on the six-man alt squad here. Ooh, and here we go. We got another alt fiesta from everyone. But York taking out Lav, uh, and then on the opposite, we have Shogunon taking out AOK. So we've got a lot of going on. Blank with Blank big shatter. shatter, huge shatter, and uh, Night by Die taken out by Sammy G as he ultimates, but the reflecting Genji wasn't enough to, to, to stop that. But Adium takes out Sammy G, and uh, looking a little even here. Yeah, and, you know, ner Yeah, okay, so a couple things about this fight. Um, so let's back it up. So... Shogun actually goes on this really long flank on the side. I mean, ideally at this point, he would be in your team and you'd be damage boosting him uh, and you'd be putting down 
quite a lot of pressure. Um, but he chose to go on this flank, which is fine. You're now prioritizing the Reaper. Cool. That's all good. Um, but then... Things start happening. So Shogun's now in position. He high noons. You guys grab. Trance comes out from the other team. And then picks start happening. So now all of a sudden it's both the healers again that are that are down. So typically when it's coming to third point anything or you know two CP second point, the respawn for the defender team is right there. The respawn for your team is all the way down the street. You know, it's three blocks away. So that gives the defenders the spawn advantage. Um but you guys land a shatter, so the the fight's not over yet by any means. You guys land a shatter, and you want to further that advantage. Because you guys lost your healer, now's the time to Valk. Perfect. Right? You Valk. You're keeping your team alive. This is all good. This is great. Now they invest the uh, Sigma ult. And it grabs both of your tanks. But again, in Valk, you get very fixated on what's happening right in front of you. And you go to focus on the Reaper battle. The Reaper's gone to battle McCree. And uh, yeah, he's gone to like 1v1 McCree. So it's a little bit of a mechanical error where you didn't take your beam off of your tanks. And not only that is your damage boosting, and you're very fixated on what's going on here with the Reaper. So had your beam been on Reaper, maybe he wins that fight. Actually, he, he definitely wins that fight, because any kind of damage boost would have got ATM the last little bit of his health. health. Um, but because you're so fixated on that, you don't see that your tanks are now both Sigma ulted, so they're both half health, right? They're both really low. Um, you try taking the the McCree fight yourself in Valk, um, and it doesn't pay off. And because you weren't healing or damage boosting anybody, or healing at this point, um, your tanks go down as well. So the timing of the... Uh, of the Valk you did was great, but the execution of it was just a little off. So at this point, um, like I said, ideally you want to be you want to be damage boosting the McCree. He's going to get a little bit more value out of his shots than his damage boosted shots than Reaper. Um, but then Yorick just does a really nice play. There's only 20 seconds left, so making this res, it's in the back, it's safe. You know, you need the numbers right now. It's You guys are kind of in like a desperation mode. Like, that's totally okay. That's, that's a good res. On defense, though, um, where your positioning was really good and really safe on offense, um, it's a shame I can't we couldn't see your point of view, but it it was really good on offense. You were you were using natural cover really well. That begins to break down on defense a little bit. So this is all fine. Um, you know, you're keeping your distance. That's great. This is all good. Staying well far back. It's only until this point where I think you don't trust the range of your beam. And you end up um, flying in a little bit. Uh, and yes, your Sigma goes down. That is a, that's a pretty big pick. But it's, the fight's not, you know, done just yet. It's this pathing that you took that opened it up 
for them. So you're staying far back. This is great. You fly in, and then all of a sudden you're like you're kind of in the thick of things, where which is not where you want to be. Supports typically want to be in the back line. Um, and then instead of backing around the corner, you back up into this room. And now now that you're in this room, Yorick the Genji sees that. So he sees that you're singled out. And that's exactly what he's hoping for. So he dashes, he chunks you, and then lands a couple shurikens to finish you off. That's exactly what he was looking for. So if we took if we took this route, if we were further back, you know, trust the length of our, our beam, play further back, and um, path around this corner, we don't give Genji the opportunity to uh, pick us off, essentially which will then elongate the fight and give you guys a better shot of of recontesting or making a play or something. And this this what you're going to see is um I, mean, I want that epic pen. What you're going to see is you guys are going to recontest through the high ground, which is fine and everything. Um, you're going to be lingering here in the air for a very long time. And you don't get focused immediately, but it's an incredibly vulnerable position, right? Like we always want to be playing natural cover. Like your beam can, can go around a corner for a couple seconds before you have to peek it again. Um, Mercy shouldn't really be in line of sight of anything dangerous. So take a look at this. So your team drops and then you're slow falling right here. And then by the time you hit the ground, you've taken enough spam damage that Moira Coalescence just finishes you off. What I would have liked to have seen was... Um, as soon as your team drops, you know, you've got, you've got somebody over here. So you jump and immediately Falk, or immediately... Um, Guardian Angel, I think it is. You fly over to them, and then you get behind this corner here, right? You always want to be safe, right? Like, your life is important. Like, you need to... Getting picked is... is not a good thing. So, yeah. So, if they had a hit scan or anybody... Um, they weren't they weren't really focusing and you kind of got away with this undetected but slow falling like that in the middle of nowhere where there's zero protection um is a is a major positioning error right we always want to be going from from natural cover to natural cover your team wins it out anyways but that was a that was a personal mistake that you know we need to fix as as a mercy player right so this fight i mean there's not much actually okay Again, this was so we need to be looking here and listening for sound cues because right now it is so you almost have Valk, you have it. Mm, 
now is when you invest Valk. And we're already four people down, right? So Valk won't swing this fight. There, in almost no world does Valk swing this fight. So it, it would have been better just to just to hold it, because let's let's take a look at the audio as well. Okay, we're getting some uh, ultimates coming up here. I figure out, obviously with the double shield it'll be easier, but it's going to be uh, a little tougher without it. Ooh, massive dynamite coming up from ADM. Okay, we're getting some uh, ultimates coming up here. As Shogun Raz, unable to pick off anything, but ADM with that bobber picks up two and the Genji Blade. So what did we hear? We heard Bob and Genji Blade come in from the opposing team, right? So Shogun did have a flanking high noon, but it was already too late. So once Bob and Genji Blade come in, that's a lot of damage that Valk's not going to be able to outheal. Blade from York. Okay, we're getting some uh, ultimates coming up here to figure out. Obviously with the double shield, it'll be easier, but it's going to be uh, a little tougher without it. Ooh, massive dynamite coming up from ADM. Okay, we're getting some uh, ultimates coming up here. As Shogun Raz, unable to pick up anything, but ADM right, like with that a... bobber picks up. It's a it's a bit of a a wasted wasted Valk. And then again, um, so we're we're looking at this. You know they did lo they do they did lose just two, but their spawn is just over there. Uh, you've now lost three, actually four, because Blank just died a couple seconds ago, so he's in spawn. So it's looking pretty grim for you guys. This res shouldn't even be attempted, because let's say you actually get it you get the res now you're resing a uh, a 500 health pool target you're resing a tank right um, there's no way he makes it out of it alive and now you've just fed Yorick another blade and you've you've let their uh, you've let their team charge their alts off of him so once a fight, learning to know when a fight is lost will go a long way. So if that fight was lost, do not res. Um, reses should only really happen if it's if it's fast and if it's protected. So let's say someone gets picked, they're behind natural cover, go for it, right? And then all of a sudden their their pick is negated. Or equal trades have been happening, and you know someone has an alt. You know it's it'll be a risky res, but if you call it out and your team can kind of back you up, you get that person up that can swing a fight. Resing someone just for the sake of resing them, is is not what we want to be doing. We always want to have a purpose behind who and what we're resing. So. Um, you make the swap to Ana, which is, which is okay. I mean, there's a lot of shields in the game, but it's fine. So within, within a couple seconds of you being Ana, you've charged alt to 45, which is good for you, you guys. You had one fight as Ana, it was a losing fight and you still built half your nano blade or you still built half your nano. Um, and remember what I said earlier, nano is one of those higher tier support alts. Um, so that's that's really valuable. So they get second. And um, I was looking at your POV. Your AD, when you play Ana, you're ADSing a little bit too much. So you're, you're aiming down sight, um, you're scoped in and you're kind of really 
um, your focus too much on on one thing. When you're playing Ana, you really want to be aware of of everything. Uh, you mostly want to be hip firing, and then if you really need to hit a shot, then you scope in. When you really need to concentrate on on hitting this one thing, that's that's kind of when you scope. But other than that, I'd like to see you hip fire a bit more because you're ADSing and not only you're, you're ADSing but you're looking to deal damage um, there's somebody yeah there's a Zenyatta over there and you were you were kind of still going for him right like if we just kind of freeze it here so you're sh you're trying to shoot that Zenyatta and your team has now rotated over this way, but your line of sight is still looking here, right? And that leaves you um, out of position, right? So as soon as as soon as your team rotates from here to here, you should be rotating from there to here right but because you're you're a little fixated on on zooming in um, you get caught by you get caught by an ash dynamite so that dynamite comes in you're still ADSing you get hit by a fire strike the bomb goes off and now you've blown your uh, your nade which is really big and then you're late on the rotate and Sigma gets you. And now you're down. All right? So there's a lot there that we could have done differently. Um, so yeah, so we want to be making sure that we're not we're not focusing too hard on one thing when we're playing Anna. And our, our main our main goal is healing. As as support, like your main goal is to keep your team healthy. Your next goal is to use your utility. So with Ana, or so most of your game was played on Mercy. So Mercy's utility is her damage boost. Um, Ana's utility is sleep darts and her nades. Whether it's burst healing or getting the anti nades, um, they're super powerful abilities. Ana is one of the most powerful champions in the game. Um, you landing those utility uh, abilities are team winning essentially so we don't want to be and then third like our last priority is doing damage to the other team she can she can do damage she can pressure Faras out of the sky but she won't do any real meaningful damage to to somebody And then you, you make the swap to Zenyatta. So right here is, I feel like you've died a couple times in pretty fast succession as Ana, but you were at 66% to your your nano, which is, again is a is a big uh, a big support alt that we want to be using, right? So I don't know if if it was a personal decision to swap off of Ana onto Zenyatta, or if it was a, a team decision. But I would like to see if it is your decision. Um, maybe stick with it. And also something I want to bring up is so right here. So you've swapped onto Ana, and let's take a look at your alt percent. So you've now entered the fight, and look at it rapidly going up. You're already at 25%, 30, 40%, and it's a loss. That was a losing team fight, and you built 45% of your ult, right? And that was just off of healing. That was all healing. 
But now in this fight, where you're very focused on attacking the enemy team, especially that Zenyatta in the back corner, you went from 45 to, to 65. So you doubled your... It was about the same, the same amount of time, right? That you spent within both of those fights. But one you were healing, one you were damaging. And you actually got that burst from healing yourself and the Moira. Um, so Ana gets a lot more ult charge out of her healing than she does damage. But I think I think it's like personally from what I'm seeing, you've died twice now, very quickly as Ana, and you're thinking, hey, maybe this doesn't work. I should switch off. Switch off. When really it it was working. Um, and this having that nano might I'm not saying it like it would have stopped this snowball but it's a very good chance that you know it it would have helped quite a bit because you swatched you swapped to Zenyatta and now you're very um, easy for a Genji blade to take care of right at least with Ana you have like a sleep dart or something but Zenyatta without Trank is um, one of Genji's first priorities. So you get killed as Sinyata, even though it, it was a blade. There was nothing that you could do to avoid that. So now you swap onto Brig. And now, you know, the cart's getting close to the end point. And. Um, And now you're, you're kind of scrapping with the rest of your team. And you 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 never built up an alt to, to use. Right. Whereas if you stayed on Ana, at least you would have had, a nano, to help to at least help with this fight. I'm not saying that you know. Because you swapped off of, Ana onto. You know. Um, the other characters and you can't kind of gave up that that nano that this is what lost you the map but i'm saying that it would have given you a better chance um there is something to be said about getting onto the correct hero um you know maybe if we played brig from the start of the point then you might have been able to to build up rally but um Having that nano in the back pocket, and and kind of giving it away, probably wasn't the best call. So that's that's about it. Um, so things you did, or th things that need to be worked on is uh, when you Velk. So recognizing when it's a lost team fight, and when you can kind of push your advantage with it. Uh, when you're Valking, kind of not, not trying to fixate too much on one thing. Um, so understand where your priority was. So back to, I can't remember what team fight it was. Uh, that was quite a while back. It was the second point. You knew the Reinhardt needed help. You put a beam on him. That's fine. But you don't need to exclusively look at him, right? Um, the fight that happened right here is you immediately knew so this this was this was an example you had a great timing on the valk what's going on yeah pop valk and you immediately knew that that reaper is your priority so you went to him but you're you're very fixated on him, right? So try not to fixate too much while you're Valking. Um, reses, knowing when the team fight is is lost and when it's still winnable. And um, oh oh no okay yeah, and then just being careful not to swap heroes too much to uh, to negate or get rid of any alt charge that you, you may have. Um, 
yeah, so those, those are kind of the, the big points. Um, yeah, and all like it, it was a it was a good game by you for sure. There's just a few things that you know we can we can clean up. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for for reaching out. I hope this helped, and uh, see you later.